Miss Ford, I have a question. You, you hear from Tupac lately? My addiction is not one of the cool addictions like um, sex addiction. You are nothing but an illegitimate bastard. three states and uh, meeting three different times to get Matt Hartman to sleep with me. <laughs> the first time we met was in Chapel Hill, North Carolina on the street and by the time my brain could process, oh, he is cute, he was walking away. The second time we meet, I learned that he has no recollection of the first time that we had met, so obviously I am doing real well. Um, the second time we meet, by a weird series of coincidences, is in the front yard of my on-again, off-again boyfriend's house in South Carolina, where I have just driven for the first tiny leg of a road trip that will take me and this on-again boyfriend to Texas to work on a couple different farms in Texas. So I've really come down to Columbia to sort of start this off and see if we can reinvigorate the flame of our somewhat tepid relationship, but the second I see Matt, the whole reason I'm in Colombia goes out of my head. And I just start thinking, like, oh, if I could just, you know, charm him a little bit. So I spend the entire evening ignoring my on-again, at that moment, boyfriend, and just trying to woo this other man. Second time doesn't go so hot for me either. End up in the bed I originally planned on getting on when I drove to South Carolina. All is, all is fine, all is fine. Uh, I know some of y'all are probably thinking, hey, inviting your on-again boyfriend that you're not that into to drive all the way to Texas with you is maybe not a great idea. But I've always been a little bit stubborn, so it's not surprising that it takes me seven states and a non-functioning radio to work that one out. Uh, I drop my now permanently off boyfriend at the Houston airport with a duffel bag and some cigarettes because I'm not a total asshole. Um, and I just, y'all, I just start, I drive through the Houston construction zones that are so confusing. I get proposed to by a, by a man at a gas station with what looks like a piece of PVC pipe. And by the time I make it out of Houston, I am in the most deep, place of self-doubt that I have ever been in my entire life to date. And I pull into this little tiny farm in the middle of nowhere in Texas, Wimberley, Texas, in fact. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself in the car, you should never be allowed to make another decision on your own. <laughs> because every decision to date has really just, whew, it's really not led you to a good place. So a week later, when I have the realization that I am, in fact, living on a farm in Wimberley, Texas, no one but my parents back in North Carolina know where I am, and I am living with somebody who is, in fact, crazy. I mean, the woman who owns this farm is unhinged to an unreal level. Uh, so, but because I've decided I, I am not allowed to make any more decisions, because they're all just awful when I make them, I just, I, I'm paralyzed and I just, I stay. So obviously, this is the third time that I meet Matt Hartman. Woo, somebody's excited. <laughs> he illogically is standing in the foyer of this farm in the middle of nowhere in Texas when I come in from a morning of uh, picking sticks out of dirt. I mean, she was really, she was not a farmer. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at him and I just, nothing, nothing is computing. And in the next few minutes, I learned that out of all of the farms in Texas, and Texas is literally only farms. <laughs> this is the farm that Matt Hartman has picked to stop at on his cross country finding himself road trip. And, and, okay, so my insides are starting to go and I'm like, okay, this means something. I learn a second later that my showing up means that he doesn't have a place to stay anymore. So he's basically kicked off the farm and has nowhere to go. The least I can do is buy him a beer. So that night we're sitting in a tiny dingy piano bar in Saint Au Saint, no, San Antonio, sorry, they all mix together. San Antonio, Texas. Um, 
And we, oh my gosh, over the longest rendition I have ever heard and ever hoped to hear of itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini, I am just like, I am word vomiting at this poor man who's just trying to have a cross country trip about how awful this farm is and how stuck I am. And Matt just looks at me for a minute after I get all this like, ugh, onto the table. And he says, well, why don't you just leave with me? And before my brain can even say, like, no, we are not making decisions anymore, my mouth says emphatically, yes! <laughs> and then before I know it, we're on the road, and we're driving through Texas, and we're driving around Louisiana, and we're in New Orleans, and we're enjoying their lax liquor laws, and then we're just, we're having so much fun, and we're just, we're just good buddies. Um, and all too soon, we're headed back to Texas to pick up my car and go in our separate directions. And as we're driving back across the Texas-Louisiana border, we're both so sleepy. So we pull over to spend the night in the car in an H&R Block parking lot. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, this is it. <laughs> yes, this is it. And, and uh, this is the moment we're going to sleep together. And we do. We sleep together platonically. <laughs> next to each other, awkwardly brushing every few minutes and then sort of giggling and shifting away in the back seat of his tiny car. And even though that trip didn't go quite exactly as I planned, making that decision to go with him was still one of the best decisions I think I ever made. Because the very same Matt asked me to make a decision a few months ago, and just like the first time, <laughs> I said yes. Yeah. 